Amen. This morning, for the next few moments, I want to talk about this idea of pathways. And I think I saw it on the screen a second ago, uh, the, the title uh, of the message. <clears throat> In Matthew 17, 14, there's a scripture that says this. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, uh, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except through prayer and fasting. And, uh, you know, there was, there was a moment where the disciples could not produce, didn't seem to be able to produce enough power. Uh, there was a man who said, you know, Lord, have mercy on my son. They needed more faith. And Jesus very clearly said, you know, there's some things that need to happen and can happen only through prayer and fasting, a, a withdrawal, a sacrifice time, a, uh, a separation time. And um, I got to be thinking, I got to be thinking, and I, 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 heard rehearsal this morning about nothing is impossible and, and miracles and, and uh, we're in good company this morning that we believe in miracles, but yet oftentimes um, I saw it the other day on a, on a post from somebody that there's a, there's a major movement today against miracles. And it's not necessarily that they don't believe in miracles, but people are saying, you know, uh, we're, we're making miracles the God of things as opposed to look to the Lord of things. And I just want to challenge us today that as we look to the Lord, we're going to believe for miracles. As we, uh, as we surrender to him, as we believe in his name, as we lay hands on the sick. Listen, if you came here this morning, um, just know we're going to lay hands on the sick before you leave. And if you happen to be sick, don't think we're just like rolling dice and just hoping that maybe just by happen chance that God may show up and you may be touched by the Lord. We're believing in the name of Jesus that God is going to touch you and God's going to heal you and God's going to, God's going to change Nothing is impossible with God, and uh, God's calling us to dream today, and God's calling us to, to higher heights, and God's asking us to look at our situations and look at where we are and look where we're going and surrender to him in the process. When God asks you to do something possible and you do it, you look good. When God gives you something impossible to do, he uses you, he looks good. I'm all about him looking good. I'm all about uh, lifting him up so all the world will see. And so the facts are real that um, there's often, there's sovereignty of the Lord and there's free will of the Lord. There's, there's freedom. We get to make choices. Believe it or not, you get to make uh, choices, but the ultimate goal and the ultimate sovereignty of the Lord uh, is, has directed us through his word, through, uh, we don't want to go against what the word of God says. And so, um, so scripture says this, scripture says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it, right? But in that, he, he's called us so that we would give, that we would go, that we would serve, we would worship, and we would praise. But I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And so sometimes I believe there's a disconnect between, you know, what the, what the word says or what we just take for face value and the unction that we need to put into it. Another, another thought, God says to Noah, I will deliver you from the flood. Everybody remember the story in, in Old Testament? Noah and the flood. I'm going to deliver you from the flood. So now, build an ark. Build a boat. Well, here's, here's sovereignty of God. God says to Moses, I will deliver you. But now go get the people and lead them out of captivity. Again, I'm ask, we're asking the question, what, what is God saying to us? What is God saying to you? God will protect me. You believe in the protection of the Lord? Come on, I, I depend upon the protection of the Lord. But lock your doors and windows at night. God will be Jehovah Jireh, provider, but get a job. God has a wife for you, but you have to ask her out. God has a husband for you. I guess in the day and age today, you can ask him out. Maybe not. I don't know. I hear the groaning and the, and the, moan, and the murmuring, murmuring. <clears throat> God will give you good health, but you got to eat right. 
God will give you an amazing marriage. But you have to love one another. And you have to work on it. Isaiah 55, 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. And then in Revelations chapter 2, verse 29, it says this. Are your ears awake? Listen. Listen to the wind words. The spirit blowing through the churches. I believe even as I speak this morning, as I share this morning, um, and I've had it happen, I've had it happen a hundred times where I've had someone come up to me after the service and say, Pastor, thank you for sharing on, on, on this topic. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't, I don't even think I even touched that topic. But somehow, through the power of your Holy Spirit. So God knows where every person is this morning. God knows where every circumstance, every situation is. And so we're going to believe uh, for him to speak to us today. And so if you're taking notes this morning, um, the first area I want to talk about is highways. Pathways lead to highways. Pathways lead to highways. Pathways lead to highways. Hallelujah. Can you hear that? Pathways lead to highways. Now, I, I, almost, I almost said these words. Pathways lead to higher ways. Higher ways. And so there's a scripture in Genesis 22. If you take your Bible. Genesis 22, 1 through 3. It says this. Sometime later, God tested Abram. Abraham. He said to Abraham, here I am. He replied, then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. It's incredible. It's an incredible story. You may want to unfold it this week during uh, Devo time. But in Genesis 22, this story of Abraham, this story of, of, of this sacrificial moment, this story of obedience changes so much. Pathways lead to highways. Pathways, sometimes when you look at a mountain, I think we had a, had a mountain picture there. They're not necessarily, when you want to climb a mountain, it's not always just straight up. Oftentimes, if you want to climb a mountain, you kind of start here and you kind of go this way, then you turn and you go this way, and you turn and you go this way, and you turn and go this way, until finally you've reached the, the, the top, you've reached the pinnacle, you've reached where you want to go. And God's called us all to the pathway. We read the scripture uh, earlier. Uh, uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your, I'll change it for today, your pathway straight. He's going to smooth things out. He's going to make things clear. And for the next few moments, I'm going to talk about the pathway that God has called us on. He's inviting us this morning to go higher. Over the past few years, uh, uh, I've actually held a, uh, um, <laughs> I've held membership at the gym across the street. Uh, and so I, I joke with people often. I say, if it, if it was any closer, I'd be there all the time. And uh, some of you would die to have the gym, like, you know, uh, a, a block from your house or a block from your, uh, where, where you work. And so sure enough, uh, um, I've gone over there a few times and, um, and I've been on this thing called a treadmill. Anybody been on a treadmill before? Yeah. I've actually graduated to a rower. I've got a rower and a treadmill and, uh, and I hate it. I, ha I just want you to know, I hate, I hate running. I hate treadmills and I hate rowing, but I like to eat. And so I got you just can't do one without the other. Okay. You gotta, you gotta put some time into. And, um, uh, so the other day I was on the, I was on the rower and, uh, I happened to be in Japan because there's a screen with the rower and it takes you to different places. You can, you, you can like, you can float down the river. I can be in Boston going down the river, but this, there's a new, a new, new place they take you in Japan. And so here I am pulling, and I'm watching, and I'm seeing, and uh, it was extremely, uh, it was challenging. And what was even more challenging 
after the 20, 30 minutes I put in, when I got off the rower or when I got off the treadmill, I was in exactly the same place as I was. Isn't that kind of frustrating? I mean, I, I mean, I saw some beautiful sights. I mean, I could have been in the Grand Canyon, you know, uh, and, and there I wasn't anymore. And, um, and I just felt, I, I just felt this, this morning as we, as we share this message that, uh, that we even symbolically or prophetically speak to some that are here in the room that you feel like you're in the same place you were a year ago, or you feel like you're in the same place you were two years ago. And, uh, uh, you're running and seemingly kind of wearing yourself out. Another analogy, you've kind of circled the mountain again, and he's calling us to go higher. And he's calling us, uh, and sometimes in calling us higher, um, I got, I've been offended by the treadmill across the street because there's this one button on it, and it's called incline. Yeah. yeah. It's like, not only am I walking, but now you're going to make it harder for me to enjoy Japan. You know, it's gonna, you're going to make it harder for me to focus and there's a button of incline on the, on the, on the rower. Um, it's, uh, I forget what the, what the wording, uh, they give higher tension. You know, you, get, you can go from a, a one to a hundred and you got to figure out, you know, where you want, where you want to pull on this thing. And with God trying to grow us and God trying to change us and God trying to, uh, help us as we are mighty men of God and mighty women of God, we have to realize that, uh, we are built with an incline button. And, and, and there are times that things are not going to feel all that great. Somebody say, ouch or amen. There are going to be times when we're stretched. We're gonna, there are going to be times when we have to apologize, when we think, you know, it really doesn't matter. But it does. Because God's called us to obedience. And God has things that are higher for us. You know, we, we've reached a, a pinnacle in our, our marriage, in our, in our lives. We have no children no little children in our home anymore. And, uh, and so it's, it's been great. It's, 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 it's amazing. And yet we have grandchildren and when the grandchildren come over now, we've, we've gone around to all the outlets and we've covered the outlets. So you can't put their fingers in it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, work with me here this morning. All right. And, uh, and there's things, there's things on tables and there's things and pretty much we've removed them all. But when we know the kids are coming over, we take the, the things that are nicer, or things that maybe they're going to get a hold of that they could break. And what do we do with them? We put them higher, out of their reach. So, and, and we're doing it for a number of reasons. One, because we like our stuff, all right? Number, number two is because they're not wise enough to maybe be able to differentiate between something that is maybe, uh, you know, too heavy or, or can break very easily. You know, the difference between a, uh, you know, a glass uh, stick or something that's glass and a, and a uh, plastic stick or, or whatever it is. And so <clears throat> we purpose to remove those things and, and uh, we move them higher. And again, we're not doing it because maybe one day they won't understand, but when they, they're going to understand when they get to the place where they can understand that, you know what, I had to move it higher. God's calling us higher. And there's some things that we need, need no longer to be playing around with down here. But we need to be reaching. We need to have an elevated mindset that he's, he's pulling us, that he's, he's, he's longing for us to embrace what he has for us. A number of years ago, um, I, I had the opportunity to go to Quito, well, Ecuador, but we flew to Quito first. And... Uh, I'll just tell a personal story. He's here in the room. But uh, Jonathan uh, over here, um, he was on the trip, and uh, Quito happens to be a higher elevation. I don't know if it's nine or eight, nine, ten thousand feet above sea level. And there's something called altitude sickness that people get sometimes. And it comes on basically good looking men. Um, but, and so, out of all the guys, Jonathan got it. No. And uh, so, on this, on this trip, uh, Jonathan got altitude sickness, and um, and so uh, we, had to, we had to purpose, uh, in order for him to come off this altitude sickness, we had to, we had to come from the altitude, get in the, get in the van and start driving down. And until we got to a certain place that his body was comfortable with and his, that his heart was comfortable with, um, he had you know, a big headache and it, 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 it affects people differently. But uh, um, I've, been at, I've been at altitudes of 10,000. I've actually been at uh, elevation of 14,000. 
And, um, you know, there's some things that happen when the elevation gets higher. And, uh, if, in fact, if you were to tell me today, you know, hey, after service today, Pastor, let's go climb, you know, the Smoky Mountains here in, in, in Tennessee. Well, you know, I'd probably, you know, grab a blanket, you know, a few snacks or whatever. But if you told me that, you know, let's go climb Kilimanjaro, you know, Smoky Mountains, Kilimanjaro, I would purpose myself, I would prepare differently for the one mountain than the other. Let me just bring this here. God is calling us to climb the mountain. God is calling us to higher places, and there's preparation that takes place here, and it's different preparation from the blanket to the gear. Another point I want to make about altitude is that sometimes, um, even when, when, when we've gone up uh, to altitude uh, in, a, in a bus, we purpose that we took our time going up because our bodies then acclimate. And here's some of the things that happen when we prepared for the altitude. We didn't talk as much because you can't breathe as freely at a higher altitude. And so we had to, so I'm not, I'm not yelling at students on the bus, you know, I, I had to, I had to purpose. I had to be very, very particular about what I said because I was trying to pace myself because of the oxygen that was getting into my body. Now that's a, that's a physical thing, but spiritually when we are climbing, Oftentimes, we want, to, we, we want accolades on the way up the hill. Hey, what'd you think of that? What do you think of that? Or, you know, I think God's saying this to me, but what should I, what should I do here? Let me, you know, let me get 10 people's opinions, and I'm going to weigh these 10 people's opinions over here when the Holy Spirit say, do this. Then maybe there's less of this, and there's more of this. There's less, of, there's less of, you know, trying to uh, just gather more strength from other people as opposed to, Lord, I surrender to this process. Pathways lead to higher ways. So the pathway God has us on is leading us to a higher, higher place. Um, in the scripture passage, God tested Abraham. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Pathways lead to higher ways. Number two, pathways come with testing. Pathways come with testing. Genesis 22, 3 through 6. <clears throat> Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. Then he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went on together. What do you do when you're facing change? What do you do when you're facing death? What do you do when you're facing uh, difficulty in finances? What do you do when you're believing for uh, one dream to take place and yet the dream seemingly has turned into a nightmare? You speak the word of God. And you rely on what he has told you. And you rely on the covenant. You rely on the direction that he gave. And so it's a time of no moping, no gossiping, no pulling people down, no whining, no crying. It's okay to cry, but uh, you, you, hear, you hear what I'm saying here? If you will begin to use the word of the Lord in your, in your difficult time and just holding on to direction that he's given... Uh, I'll point this out later, but um, uh, Abraham said, uh, here I am, here I am. And not till, not till later on when everything stops and, 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 and the sacrifice changes, he asks again and he replies, here I am. There was no discussion from God from the first I understand until it was time. 
And somehow in the, in the world we live in, in the time we live in, we continue to want confirmation. We continue to want these moments. And let me, let me just tell you, confirmation is amazing. It's amazing when someone comes up to you and says, you know, hey, the Lord told me you had this dream last night about this or whatever, you know, and it's kind of like, hallelujah, that's wonderful. But you know what? I don't need that in the process when there's true, dedicated obedience to the word of God. Anybody with me this morning? He asks, he asks him uh, uh, who he was. And here he is in the middle of a test. Pathways come with testing. Pathways come with testing. I, we, we changed things up. I took our first oldest son, <clears throat> Pastor Nick, for his, first, for his driving, driving test for the first time. <clears throat> and uh, when he went and took this test, I don't think he passed it the first He didn't pass it the first time, no. And I was so anxious. I was, I, was, I was so wound up on this thing that I, that I decided, you know what, I can't go back and do this again. So, Kim, you take Nicholas to go take the test. And um, she did, and he passed. He was probably more nervous with me than he was with you. And uh, that's, at least that's what I told myself. And, uh, and so we, we pretty much made that. Um, Kim pretty much took all the kids for their tests. I would help them figure out how to drive and all that, but, but she was much more relaxed and less uh, anxious on the tests. But guess what? I want you to get this today. <clears throat> how, many, how about this? How many would say you're, going, you're kind of going through a test? You're kind, of, you're, you're kind of being tested right now. Anybody here? All right. I got both hands up in my foot. All right. Here, here, here's, here's the deal. Guess what? Tests, tests are not all that bad. For, for, for Nick had to take a, a, what? A test so that what? The keys of a vehicle were now available to him and he could drive. Oftentimes in life, and I see it all the time on, 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 on the internet, I see it on, you know, people posting stuff, you know, pray for me in the middle of, the middle of this, middle of whatever. And oftentimes, this testing process that we are in, and I appreciate the ability to pray and all these things, but the end of the day is be obedient in the situation that God has called you to. And sure, it may get a little difficult along the way. I mean, here we have, we have Abraham that God says, you know what? Go sacrifice your only son. Yeah. It wasn't his only son. We'll tell you more about that in a minute. But go sacrifice him. Yes, sir. Said so that the, the next morning he went right away. Thank God for the next mornings because sometimes when it's not the next morning, we have the next day or the next week to talk about it. What do we do? Try to rally up the troops. Hey, what do you, what do you think about this? I appreciate counsel. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I tell you what, there's godly counsel and there's worldly counsel. And I want nothing but godly counsel in decisions that get to be made. Without the test, I don't get the freedom. And it's the same without God, I don't get freedom. Pass the test. Somebody needs a word today. Pass the test test. Pass the test that's right before you right now. How you respond, how you react, how you love, how you pray, how God uses you, how you're obedient. You know, and I know, uh, again, I know it's inc incredible seriousness, but when we receive the offering, that, I mean, this church survives through the Lord who says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But you know what? We pray that God provides provision for every person in this place. And because the word of God tells us to tithe, we work in that. That's called obedience. And so oftentimes, when we're not obedient in this area, then we wonder why things aren't working out so well over here. Did I just say that? Do you receive that? Do you, do you understand where, where I'm coming from here? <clears throat> Pass the test. Pass the test when, he, when, when the Lord speaks to you and you say, well, he, he doesn't speak to me that way. I tell you what. If you go higher, if you go higher, he'll start speaking to you this way. If you'll decide to go higher, anybody with me this morning? If you decide to go higher, you're going to be in the public supermarket. You're going to be in Target. And the Spirit of God is going to download on you 
and speak life, that for you to speak life to someone. Because that's the God that we serve. He's called us to be his hands, his feet. Thank God for the pillar of fire by day and the cloud, uh, uh, pillar of fire by night, cloud by day. But when it all comes down to it, God's called you and God's called me to be his hands. God's called me to step out. God's called me to give. God's called me to serve. And he will build his church, but he wants to use us in that process. God is not testing you to punish you. He's testing you because he's ready to promote you. How many had a bad week last week? Could that bad week be part of the promotion that he wants to give to you? Could that bad moment, that difficult thing that you heard, that difficult situation that you're in, that he's in the process of promotion to you? Test means that I'm going higher. And I'm all about getting and all about going higher so God comes. He takes Abraham through this kind of a very simple three-step process. He takes him from where he is. He takes him from where God needs him to be. And he shows him what he needs him to do. Too often in our walk with the Lord, we decide where we're at. And we won't move until we know what the end result is supposed to be. Think of it as a process. Sometimes later, Genesis 22, sometimes later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, Abraham says. He replied, then God said, take your son, your only son. Abraham had a couple boys at this, at this point of life. But why does he say, take your only son? And so if you go to the root word of only, here's what it was. This is, this is for somebody today, ready? The root word of your, for, for only was your unique promise. The unique promise that was for him alone, that God would bless him. It was a blessing from the Lord that God opened up the womb. The unique thing is that he's entrusted him in that moment. And he entrusts us today in that moment, the unique promise. Not what you created with your own strength, but what he created through you. And this is where he carries us from glory to glory. This is the, the life we talk about, the pathway. This is the, the headlamp ministry that I, I love, love talking about. I got to get, maybe one day, uh, I build a, like a jacket with like, like headlights you know, LED lights on the side, just to prove the point that the further I go, the further I will see. Amen. The further you go with the Lord, the further you will see. But for, for many of us, not necessarily here on this Sunday morning, we just, we just, we're just waiting for something to happen. And if I know anything about our God, he wants us to elevate. He wants us to go higher with him. There's grace on this mountain. There's financial breakthrough. But first, we need relational breakthrough. There's greater clarity as soon as you embrace obedience. Again, we want the, we want the end all gift. And we watch people and we say, you know, I want what they have. I want, what, I, I, I want what's in their life. We watch this over and over and over again. And, we, and, and, and then we, you know, I've, you ever hear the statement, nothing's too good for God's little children here? And I, I believe that. But I also believe there's process in it. And oftentimes we see the end result with not knowing the process that takes place. You know, this, this message today, you know, didn't show up this morning and took me 15 minutes to put together. There's process in it. There's prayer in it. There's moments in it. Uh, think of the, some great ministries across, across this land. You know, there's process. There's those who are paying prices. And God's called us to pay the price of obedience. 
so that he would elevate us, that we would hear, that we would see, that we would respond. Genesis 22, 3. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants, his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. Between obedience, sometimes we have delays. That's why I'm grateful for early the next morning. Early the next morning. And this led to incredible revelation that he receives when he gets to the top of the mountain. Back to Genesis 22, uh, 1 through 3. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. And I think this is a question that we often ask, uh, ask ourselves, even this morning, as we process this, this, this message. Here I am. That's, that's, that's what he says. Here I am. And he's asking the question even to us this morning. You know, you ever been in, you remember being in grade school and they would call off roll, you know, here. I used to hate that, you know, especially if they ask you to pronounce your name or, or whatever it was, you know. Here, I'm here. Here I am. Here I am. And maybe this morning the Lord's asking us this question. You know, if I, call, if, if I called your name or the Lord calls your name, when you say, here I am, are you in the place that you're supposed to be? How about this? Are you in the place that people think you are for the four hours we get together on Sunday morning? But then you're back to the place you shouldn't be? Here I am. He's just trying to identify where, where he is. Abraham, he knows where he is. Here I am. I'm in the process of elevation. I'm in the process of growing I'm in the process of going to the next. He wants our location today. He wants your location today. We're going to close uh, in a few moments. He wants your, where are you today? Where are you in the process of miracle? Where are you in the process of life, circumstance, and business, relationship? He doesn't want the fake moment Aren't you grateful to be part of a church that we don't have to be fake? Aren't you, aren't you glad we're part of, a, part of a church that, you know, there are going to be some tears shed? There are some, there are some moments of, of uh, you know, introspective, God, where am I? Aren't you, aren't, aren't you glad to be part of a, a family of God that, that uh, there, there are, there's a crowd of witnesses up there and even down here that are watching? Aren't you glad to be part of a church that dedicates babies unto the Lord and it's more about the congregation than the baby? themselves, that we would be living examples, that we would show what it is to fight, what it is to pray through, what it is to do what God's called us to do, that we would not be uh, used to um, elevate anyone but him in the process. He's asking the question. He wants our location today. He's not up to the thing that you produced on your own strategy He's not actually after the thing that's driving uh, you creatively. He's after, where are you? No, 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 really. Where are you? No, 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 really. Where are you, Abraham? Where are you, Jonathan? Where are you, Kwame? Where are you? Where are you? Usually on the, on the climbs, you have to decrease. You have to give things up. Usually on the climb, uh, if, you've, if you've gone anywhere, uh, uh, we've, we, we've, uh, we've trekked in, in jungles. And uh, I've ridden up mountains in, the, in, in buses. And they've limited you in the bus of the weight you can bring. You can't just throw it all in the kitchen sink under there. They, wanna, they, wanna, they want things light and movable. What do we hold on to? What are we holding on to? And here Abraham is in the moment that early the next morning, he gets up, he's gonna go. He didn't bring 12 servants, he only brought a couple. He knew what had to be done. Pathways lead to highways. Pathways come with testing. And number three, pathways bring clarity. 
Let me just read the conclusion of the story in Genesis 22, 6 through 19. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, placed it in the son Isaac, carried himself the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father, yes, my son Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. The two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, God built an altar there and arranged, uh, arranged the wood. Abraham arranged, arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. <clears throat> then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel from heaven called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. And what does Abraham say? Here I am in obedience, in following the direction of the Lord. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, <clears throat> it will be provided. Jehovah Jireh. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from the heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your, your own, only son, I will surely bless you, your only promise, your greatest promise, your unique promise. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the enemies and, the, and through your offering and, and nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. How about this? How about some families being blessed out of this body? How about some children being blessed out of this body because of families? Then Abraham returned to the servants and they set off together. And Abraham stayed in Beersheba. <clears throat> when praise demands a sacrifice. You know, the word for worship, you know, how many enjoyed worshiping the Lord today? Have you enjoyed worshiping the Lord? <clears throat> the real word for worship, to translate it, it's, it's not, it shouldn't, we actually, we should change the name here. Uh, at the, we won't do it, but it's not the worship team. We didn't spend time in worship. It would be called the sacrifice team because worship is sacrifice. When praise, when God demanded a sacrifice, Abraham had to choose to worship even then. When difficulties come, when testing comes, when, you know, we're taking the driver's test, we hear this, or this is said, or, or, or there are these moments, difficult conversations. Maybe there's difficult, difficult uh, discussions. Even, you know, here's Isaac talking to his dad. Hey, dad, where's, where? Something don't, something's not adding up here in this. Obviously, he knew this has been done before. the leading, the guiding, the moments, <clears throat> the pathway. The higher we go, the more clarity we get. <clears throat> and the thing that has stuck with me even this, even this morning in early hours is when we see pathways, like we see here, pathways become smoother. We're able to lead with pathways to the next generation. You're able to, you're able to lead. I heard somebody say recently, you know, uh, uh, they were getting an award <clears throat> and they said, you know, I may, not, I may not be able to fill the shoes that this person wears, but at least I can follow the pathways that they've made. God has called us all to pathways. There's testing in them. There's moments of discouragement in them. And yet, when we find ourselves obedient 
in them. There are higher ways. There are greater ways. <clears throat> so today, in the conclusion of the story, God fulfilled prophecy. <clears throat> and we've, I don't know if we teach our children here in the back to sing this, but uh, Father Abraham had many sons and many sons as Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. And so we pray, praise him, we long for him, and we look to him. <clears throat> Don't mistake your pathway for catastrophe. Don't mistake your dismantled dreams, your dried out hopes, your discouraging circumstance, your disjointedness, your brokenness, your debilitating fears for things of the enemy. But look at them and embrace them as, let me pass the test. There are many scriptural references, <clears throat> especially in the Old Testament. You could, look at the, you could look at the life of Joseph when he was imprisoned, that he had to pass a test. And he finally came through and God used him mightily. I close with an illustration. I use, I, I probably share this illustration at least once a year. I tried to look back at my notes when the last time I shared this. But I just, I get to practice every Sunday how the Lord speaks to me. And so I just want to share this. If you've heard it before, take some notes. But in the 17th century, there was an epidemic of yellow fever. Maybe it was like COVID, I don't know. It was undiagnosed and untreatable. Many people lost their lives. Many who thought to be passed were actually buried alive. Before the advent of modern me medicine, before they could figure out you know, how to treat this, what they would do is they, they, they came in fear and so they would, uh, they would just take these bodies that seemed dead and they would bury them. It wasn't irrational, irrational to do this. It was just all they needed to do. Historical records indicate that during the yellow fever plague, victims collapsed, seemingly dead. And there were 149 reported cases in, uh, I believe it was an English countryside of people who seemed dead, but were actually buried alive. Think about this. I want you to get that. They were actually buried alive. And how they figured that out is one time they exhumed, exhumed a body because they had to check something. And they realized that there was some motion that took place in the casket. Kind of Kind of creepy, but I'm going somewhere with this. I want you to get this. <clears throat> and so uh, they had a major, major issue on their hands. And so uh, cemeteries decided to hire a, uh, a sacred grave walker who would walk the midnight hour, the midnight shift. In fact, uh, uh, the graveyard shift, we actually, that's a terminology that comes from this story. This is a true, this is a true story. <clears throat> and they would walk and... Uh, they would make their rounds daily, and they, were, they would walk up and down. I mean, imagine, imagine a job like that. I mean, some of us got some, some tough jobs, you know, but can you imagine just walking through a cemetery all night long? Because what they had done was the people had died. They decided they had this brilliant idea that they would tie a rope to the, to the foot of the person in the casket and bring some string up, six feet up, and wrap it over a piece of iron and put a bell on the outside of it. And the sacred grave walker would walk all night long listening for one thing. Listening for the sound of a bell. All night long. Just listening, wanting to hear this bell. <clears throat> and if for some chance they would hear that bell, there was a team of people, a team of people who came and they ran, family members ran. And what did they do? Just kind of stand around and just, you know, believe they were going to, it was going, they were going to rise from the dead. No, they began to dig. They were, I mean, family members who had lost this loved one, they would begin to dig and dig and dig and dig, hoping that their mom, hoping that their sister, hoping that their friend 
was still alive. That there would be life given back to that which was seemingly dead. Think about that. I know there are a lot of dreams in this house. We land the plane this morning. I know there are a lot of hopes in this house for greater, for better, for circumstance. But this morning, I want you to know that our Lord, he can bring back to life anything. Hurts, dreams, brokenness. And so our, even our prayer today is ring the bell of truth over our hearts, Lord Jesus. Bring back to life the places deep inside of us that we have allowed to slowly die. When praise demands the sacrifice, when praise says, you know what? God's calling me to do this. God's calling me to give up maybe my hopes and my dreams and, and how I'm thinking of things. And you follow through. Look at the blessing in Abraham's life. Look at the blessing that he bestows upon obedience. And so this morning in this house, on this day, as we discuss pathways, what's dying? What's, what, where's the disappointment that the Lord can bring life back to those hopes? The Lord can bring uh, life back to that circumstance or situation that he does all things well and he can change anything. We sang it earlier. Do you truly believe it? That nothing is impossible with God? That miracles still do happen? Would you stand with me this morning? <clears throat> Father, we love you. We surrender to you. We long for you. For those areas that need life, those areas that need healing today, we say thank you in advance for you do things well. You do things well. We're going to close in a song. We're going to close in prayer. But this morning, as uh, this message has unfolded, maybe the Lord has spoken to your heart. Maybe there's some areas that you need life back. Maybe there's some hopes and promises that you're waiting for. Maybe you're not the most desperate moment. But maybe you're at a place where, you know what? Could it be today? Could that miracle take place today? Sure, he's calling us to dig. Sure, he's calling us to, to surrender. Sure, he's calling us to obedience. But is there life today? I believe there's life. We'd love to pray with you this morning. As we sing this song, if you've got a need this morning, God stir in your heart. If today's the day of saying, no, I'm going to step in obedience, would you come? Let us pray with you. Let's watch what God will do.